welcome everybody to all out and about another episode again and this is my first time to do outdoor interview of course with one and only Saeed al -Muhiri. thank you so much how are you and welcome to all out and about hello thank you very much uh, I would like to welcome you too for uh, thank you for interviewing me actually I'm very humbled by this interview and thank you for reaching out um, uh, hello everyone on Facebook live hello everyone on zoom uh, I'm very happy to be here with you all today and to be on Out and About. And we are out and about, and you can <laughs> see that Burj Al Arab is behind me. Thank you so much for interviewing me on it's such a pleasure. beautiful location. It's a pleasure. You know, all the pleasure is all mine because, firstly, um, you are you're so approachable. And when you when I just told you about the mission of All Out and About, when I just told you about All Out and About, and you said, Ah, let's do this. And really, you know, I didn't expect you to, re to respond immediately because I I'm expecting you're a very busy person. <laughs> but, worry. you know, just for you guys to know, he told me he's scheduled for a week. And I was like, you know, Shadley, just pick up. Uh, pick some day you like. I was like, oh my God, it's my, you know, it's my first time to have like this. A very convenient um, person to be with. And uh, for the people to know a lot and about, we, talk, we will talk about empowerment, stories, journey. His success about his writing career and and many more so Saeed um, I'd like you to to tell us a brief uh, something about yourself okay my name is Saeed Al-Mahiri I'm a UAE national uh, uh, I am uh, working I used to be working I mean I still am working as an expert in marketing communications I've been working for the past 11 years since I graduated university and um, uh, fun fact about me I was the first Emirati male to be employed by Gucci. Second fun fact about me, I like to write and reflect on my life and I've been doing it for the past 13 to 14 years. That's when I started my blog when I moved to Australia in 2007. Wow. That's really, you know, uh, what I can say right now for you to know, we actually had a catch up and um, it's very interesting for me because Coming from Emirati, like you, all the experiences and um, all the all what you have, what you have right now, we'll talk more about it and about the writings, about the career that he shows. So, how was your like when you were in, in university? May you tell us more of the um, course that you take before and how's the experience? Actually, I will tell you a little bit. I will reverse a little bit until high school and year twelve, mm -hmm. because I'm very thankful for my English teacher because before her I didn't know that marketing communication existed as a major growing up in Dubai you are you know very well aware but back in 2005 and 6 when I was back in high school uh, people were, wanted to become engineers go to medicine um, you know, computer science was a very major course at the time and environmental science was a very big focus of the country at the time um, law and business, of course, and I did. I just never knew that marketing communications or advertising and the creativity side of marketing existed as a option for me in university. Mm -hmm. And at the time, only American University in Dubai would teach it. Yes. So it was only one university, and they've just started having that major. Uh, I I was very good in writing in English. I was spelling bee competition winner in my school and. My English teacher loved me, and I loved my English teacher. I'm still in touch with her until today. And um, she told me, Saeed, you know what? Uh, what do you want to be after high school? Like, it's your last year here, so where do you want to go? And I told her, I want to study English literature. And she's like, sweetie, I studied that, and there is no money in that for you. <laughs> no, matter, no matter how good of a writer you become, it's just very difficult to make it as a writer or as an English teacher uh, mm -hmm. earning enough to sustain you and lifestyles go. English teacher is more or less yes. a traditional subject nowadays. And she said, the new world is coming. It's 2006 and you need to work in, in an industry that is going to be for your generation. And maybe you should look into a major called marketing communications or integrated strategic communications. Wow. And I told her, what's that? I've never heard of it before. She <laughs> said, your homework for the day is to go and look it up. Wow. So I went and I looked it up and I was amazed because I used to like to design the cover of our school newspaper and stuff like that. And it's the major of what I love doing and yes. it's my hobby and it's my passion and I've been doing it for years for my school as a, you know, as part yeah. of the press club as well. So I decided to go into that major. 
At the beginning, I had some backlash from my family because they couldn't understand what this major was. And they were like, that's a hobby, that's not a job. <laughs> and, uh, and I told them, no, it is actually a job and we can make it happen. It's just not a lot of Emiratis are choosing it. I was certainly one of the first ever Emirati yes. males to study because I remember when I graduated, I was like a very rare commodity in the industry yes. <laughs> because people were like saying, you study marketing communications? I don't know any UAE nationals that did. Yes. And uh, I got a scholarship to study it because my father refused for me to pay for well, my university. Mm -hmm. like, if you want to for me to pay, you need to go into law. And I think it was his way of pushing me into, yes. into finding other ways of being independent because I know for a fact that if I didn't get a scholarship, he would have paid for my education knowing my father. It's just that it was his way of telling me, you know, you're 18 years old now, you're your own man, maybe you should wait, look into other ways of income and maybe go into university on your own. Thankfully, I got a scholarship from the government because I was a very bright student. Mm -hmm. And I went to Australia and studied in Queensland University of Technology, Marketing Communications. Oh, I can see since when you were young, you are ambitious, you are, um, you know, you're achieving a lot of goals in your time. And uh, I'd like to know, what were you when you were young? Aside from this um, studies, uh, choosing the course, when you were younger, um, what do you have uh, remembered until up to date that you don't actually forget? Okay, so I went to the same school my whole life, mm -hmm. from grade 1 till 12. And this allowed me to be very empowered, I, I assume, because I grew up with the same amount of people. My class was very limited to about 45 people, but like the class that we graduated in 2007, but we all knew each other more or less because we grew up together. Mm -hmm. And I think if I was not in this, in this school, shout out to Jams AKNS and all of the <laughs> students from there. Hello. Uh, uh, I wouldn't have become the man that I am today. I was very popular in school even though I was a nerd. Mm -hmm. And I know that's a very rare thing because <laughs> growing up in the world that is today, I know that people like me that are smart and bookworms and love to read are usually, well not maybe today, but at the time in the 90s, yes. they used to be picked on or bullied being and judged. being judged yes. and you know they're not the very popular ones. and. Trust me, I did not look like I look like today. <laughs> I had glasses, I was a bit slightly overweight, I had a lot of pimples, and I did not look like this at all. Wow. <laughs> and um, looking back at it today, I am surprised I never had people bully me in my class. They actually all loved me and embraced me. I had the same personality, that never yes. changed. Yes. But. I was always this loyal friend, the one that is always open to new ideas, uh, discussing things with people from all over the world. I was lucky that it was an international school and I had UAE nationals amongst Lebanese, amongst Christians, studying with me and uh, at the time we didn't have Jews but we'll soon have them too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and It was very interesting because I was, I think, exposed to many cultures at a very young age. Yes. So I would celebrate Christmas with my friends, even though I'm Muslim. Mm -hmm. But it was just a, a time for us to celebrate because they would celebrate Eid with me. Yes, yes. And it was such a way for me to learn the value of accepting others at exactly. a very, very young age since I grew up yes. in a multinational and you know diverse environment. I can say that you're very multicultural or cultured you know, um, intellectual, and uh, what amazed me is you accepted the differences and you make it work because before it's not so easy. Let's admit that it's not so easy for other people to to mingle with other people who has a different belief, right? But you made it possible, and right now I can say you're one of the most successful Emiratis at your generation because you proved them that mass communication exists. Now there are many people taking that course in Dubai. Extreme. They make it like a playground right now, right? Yes. Even me myself, I like to do being a journalist. A uh, journalist when I was younger, I like writing, I like editing the header page like that. And and a lot about brought me here with you. So it's Thanks. such a pleasure. I, I like to know, do you have any um, supposed supposedly dreams when aside from being a um, mass communication graduate or you thought something about that? So as of Two days ago, I'm actually an entrepreneur uh -huh. of a company that, that is uh, co-founded by two partners. One Israeli, one Emirati, being me. And my you know, goal in life 
is to promote acceptance, oh, loving of yeah. others. And what else other than starting a company with an Israeli would be the way yes. of us Arabs showing, or me, showing the true value of acceptance and peace within yourself and within others. You did, you did mention that I am one of the people that embraces differences, and yes. that is completely true. But I will tell you something that I completely believe in ever since I was a very young man, is that at our very core, there are no differences because we are all human. No matter where you come from, you know, countries are a human construct. Religions are a spiritual construct. But before that, biology. Yes. We're all human. We all have the same hands. We all have the same legs. We're all built with the same brains, no matter where we come from and how we look like. Yes. What kind of way we would pray for. And this has inspired me that no matter where you come from, no matter who you are, you know, these differences is what makes you beautiful. Okay. But at our very core, we're all the same. We're yes. human. And, you know, the United Arab Emirates started, you know, united in 1971. But before that, we were crucial states. And what united us is the belief that we are all Arab, that we are all tribal, that we all come from the same families in, in this particular area of the region. Yes, we were the last country in the Gulf to be established yes. officially, but we were built on the value of tolerance and accepting others no matter where we come from. And you can see we built this metropolis in less than 50 years. Yes, that's actually I'd like to uh, you know, commend the UAE leaders because uh, of course we all know that you got, we we reached the Mars, the fifth nation to reach the Mars. On, first Arab nation to yeah, do so. First Arab nation to do so. So congratulations, Thank you and so it feels so glad to be here. You know, we call uh, UAE as home right now, and it, it made me goosebumps actually when I watched them. And you know, I wanna congratulate all the people who work uh, for this adventure and great journey. It's actually magnificent. Um, humanity's achievement at, at this stage of life because it's crisis but uh, UAE never stops to fail people you know uh, and in grace of God we, we reach there and and now as we we talk about your you being open-minded I like to ask do you think that there should be more improvement for um, expatriates in edi not only in the UAE but in the region um, and also how do you address other people if you know if they for example they cannot accept the new people the newcomers for example the Israelis um, you know you are now an ambassador for peace we could say that you are an advocate for oneness so what is your message about what's your opinion so about? actually I'm part of an Israeli NGO and a Marathi NGO that has a leg here it's called Israel is and it's one of the biggest mm -hmm. uh, Israeli NGOs actually the biggest and promoting Israeli culture around the world and uh, the UAE leg of it is called UAE is oh, and okay. it's just been formulated about when we signed the peace treaty and the yes. Abraham Accords now we meet every Wednesday and uh, we discuss everything from culture, cinema to business and how we can uh, work together to you know, achieve projects that are going to be several achievements for the generations to come. You know, our fathers gave us the, uh, and our leaders gave us the gift of peace between us and Israel and they gave us the gift and it's now up to us to know or my generation to know how we can pass on this gift to the next generation yes, by establishing good. different projects, uh, you know, in fintech, in technology, and you know, uh, Israel is known as the startup nation yes. because they're the and and they're the biggest one around the world. But yes. you know who's the second? UAE. Oh, really? So oh, how can we how so can we work together to become ironic. a region yes. of a startup companies that is built with youth? built with people that are 35 years and under that have dreams that are, can accomplish together. You know, I, would al I, I always like to say that the UAE is, you know, we are the generation of the future because we are not living in the present, we're living in the future. Yes. We just built the museum of the future. Yes, exactly. We're showing the future to the world. And if we don't embrace that as Emiratis, if we don't embrace that as experts that come and live here, you will be left behind because you're no longer living in the future, you're now living in the past. Oh, that's a beautiful one. 
since you mentioned the uh, museum, I'd like to to greet uh, Yaya Kadura. He's an architect, and you know we've been messaging him since last year because he's so busy to have uh, here at all out and about. But what you said is so beautiful, actually. Uh, I, we all, I think, personally, never thought that the U is the second country who has its most startup, you know, building with youth as well. So this is a good opportunity, and I know that. Uh, we cannot please everybody, you know, we don't promote here in All Out and About any hate. But if, if we understand the the way that the UAE is coping with this, is to, to stop what is limiting to the Middle East um, neighborhood before, you know what I mean to say? Yeah. This is a good start. And and after that, uh, I think, of course, other, other our other brothers from Qatar, now that the airspace is open, the production is open again, the manufacturing. So. Well, this is a good achievement, right, for 2020? Of course, because 2021 as well. Because honestly, um, I don't know if you've read my last article that I've posted on my website, but I have said that humans have proven for years and years and years that wars do not work. Yes. But now, in our generation, we've proved to the whole world for the first time that the only way that humans can advance is collaboration. That's Working with others in a peaceful you know, just manner where everything has a structure, but also it's a collaboration of ideas. Structure is important, leadership is important, but what you do with it and how you lead, it doesn't need to be political leadership. It could be, you know, entrepreneurship. It could be, you know, societal leadership. It's, it could be community leadership when you are just gathering around in your community, cleaning the beach, just to, you know, do something that is beneficial for humanity. Wow. And uh, one of the uh, sorry NGOs that I volunteer for that was started by uh, by Ahlam uh, uh, um, in UAE that was started last year during the pandemic mm -hmm. is Mangroves for Mankind. Now Mangroves for Mankind is an NGO that I volunteer for completely and I do everything for them. For me, we do not make any money out of this mm -hmm. NGO. What we do is just plant mangroves all over the world. Okay. And I swear, my work for this organization that I do not get any return for in terms of financial gain, but I get a lot of return for in terms of feeling good about myself, is one of the best things that I've ever done in yes. my life. And I always thank Ahlam for it. And shout out to Ahlam if you're ever watching this. Uh, she is the director of the Emirates Airline Literature Festival, one of the biggest festivals mm -hmm. also around the world that was just held last weekend. Yeah, last week. And kudos for there and her team because it was such a major success. Uh, so starting this NGO, uh, you know, she got this idea and she started this NGO in less than a month because she saw the, you know, the, the wildfires in Australia and California and she's saying, what can I do, a person here in the UAE and Emirati, to help the world, you know, get less wildfires? And mangroves are very unique with the way they are. They have blue carbon, and the way they are, they uh, um, uh, you know convert uh, CO2 into oxygen around the world. Yes. It is almost 80 percent more than that than other plants around the world. And we, UAE, are a mangrove-rich country, and we can see we have a lot of mangrove deforestation around the world because people are just not uh, aware of the importance of mangroves. So what we do is we just collect money, and it's a charity, we do not spend any of it, all of it is done in planting mangroves around the world. And now we just say, you know, every one dollar you donate to us is a mangrove tree we plant. Oh, this beautiful, um, this beautiful initiative, right? Yes. And you know, this, this kind of talk, I felt like I am, I'm so much comfortable because you know, you're such a good guest and you made me feel like at home, you know what I mean to say? Thank you so I, much. We're just chilling and hearing all out and about, we like this kind of um, exploration, discoveries. Um, for now, aside from these achievements that you have right now, and of course we could do this to the founders and the, the people behind Ahlam, as she said, let's go to your personal life about writing. Since, right. how did you start writing? And do you remember what was your first, um, um, written journal before? Okay, so I started writing in high school thanks to my English teacher. Shout out to her, Ms. Amna. <laughs> the same teacher. Same, oh, teacher. same teacher. Hello, Ms. Amna. And she told me, say, you know, you, you have a beautiful way with words. You should always, always reflect on your life in writing. And I was mentioning to my Israeli group as well yesterday that this is the best advice I've ever gotten because 
looking back at my writings from 2005, I swear to God, it's like someone else written this. Yes. I had completely different mindset. You, you, you it was a completely different world. We yeah. only had Facebook. There was no Twitter, no Instagram, no Zoom. But we had Friendster. Sorry? Friendster. Have you been engaged with Friendster? No, I didn't have Friendster. I had High Five. Oh, yeah. I, I, I had this. But it wasn't as popular on social media as exactly. today. That's for sure. But what I remember is that she always said, you know, put it in writing. And uh, at the time, I would write in a journal with just handwriting because it was just not so popular to have a blog. And yes. then I started having a blog in 2007. And now going back to my writing in 2007, which is some of them is I put offline because it's just <laughs> embarrassing <laughs> for me to have. But it was, you know, documenting stuff from school, yes. documenting stuff in high school. And how you do it. Like and, and I bought a digital camera in 2004 and I still have all of my albums from I was in high school in year 10. I have all uh, analog photos that I yes. digitized now, but all of my digital photos from 2004 I would say yes, 2004, until today, I have them on the cloud. And That's beautiful. I have a glossary and, you know, a diary, visual and videos of me in high school. Uh, uh, you know, me in competitions, other friends in competitions, other friends in high school, us playing around in the playground, and I would just document every single thing. I wouldn't post it online, but I just documented. And today, in today's age, you know, I go back to my friends and send them videos, you know, from 15 years ago. And they're like, how do you have this? A month ago, back. I sent my, one of my high school best friends a video of him just putting me in a chair and just whirling me around. Yes. And I'm like, wow, roller coaster. But, you know, we were in grade 11. Exactly. And this is so confusing. Yeah. Like, it was so, like, not who we are nowadays, yeah. but like, I sent him this video and he said, if this video gets out, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like scandal. In he, he's yeah. a major, you know, engineer yeah, now, sure. and, you know, a manager at this job. And, you know, but like these beautiful things of our innocence as children, I documented all of it. And looking back at it, I'm so appreciative of the experiences I've had, good and bad. And trust me, there were so many bad experiences mm -hmm. I've had in my life. I know I sound so positive and, yeah. but I've had some of my darkest times as well, you know, uh, moving by myself to Australia, 14, away, 14 hours away from my family, uh, making it by myself. I never even used to go to the grocery store here in Dubai by myself, you know, growing up. Everything was provided by my family, by my parents. But then I woke up to a different world at the age of 18 mm -hmm. where not everyone is as nice as yes. you think they would be. Not everyone's, you know, here to make your life happy. and. I just had to learn how to become my own self and you know depend on myself and learn how to become depend independent and secluded from my family and so far away from them that I even at the time had to schedule calls because mm -hmm. we could we didn't have video calls here yes. in the it wasn't so popular back in 2007 or even around the world to be honest yeah. having a phone call to my father and my mother just to check on how they are was costing me hundreds of yes. dollars, you know, every month. So I had to schedule it every Friday at 6 p.m. And if I miss their call, I can't call them back. And it was very interesting to me to just become dependent and, you know, scheduled and, uh, you know, learn from others where I was, I think, the only Emirati in my marketing communications class. I had other Arabs that are still mm -hmm. my friends till today. Shout out to my Bahraini friends and Kuwaiti mm -hmm. friends. But I was the only Emirati in the class. and. Uh, I had to also notice the little differences that we have within GCC nationals, because growing up in Dubai, everyone's just so everyone's just the same, and everyone has the same rights. But then I would see that even Bahrainis amongst themselves, they would have differences. Emiratis within ourselves, we would have differences. Mm -hmm. Not everyone grew up so you know open-minded as me and had the same opportunities as me. Some of them had to come from government schools where they had to you know yes. study uh, English for a year. I was lucky enough I didn't have to do that and just go straight to that to university because my English command was very good and I spoke English as a first language. But seeing these differences and being exposed in a world of Emiratis that is di these differences even amongst my people living in the same city mm -hmm. was very interesting. But you know, wow. I see that as I grow, these differences are becoming smaller yes. and smaller and smaller and 
I would thank the leadership of my country and Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid and Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed and the founding father of this of this country, Sheikh Zayed, may he rest in peace, because they they put the little seeds for these plants to grow, for these differences to become, you know, smaller and smaller and smaller, and these planting these roots today, I. As a child growing up in the city, I never saw it because it was just the norm, right? But looking back at my childhood, looking back through my writing at my teenage years, it was a completely different world where, you know, accepting each other was not, yes. I would say... Not so welcoming before. Not so welcoming before, but yes. it wasn't because people are rude yes. or hateful or... You know, uh, they were just unaware. Yes, I know where that's a good that's a good one because I was supposed to say a uh, lack of education about it, but I know where is really a good phrase to use because in my experience before, um, you know, growing up here, all my adulthood in the UAE, it's also a little different. But you know what? One person's mistake never really unleash what is my impression about the UAE cultures the UAE traditions because in my personal experience I remember you know I came from a family that were very lucky to to be around the places in within the UAE the seven Emirates and I knew the differences you know uh, for me I can classify if you are like uh, the Emirates are what are the, the other GCCs are so it's it's for me before I remember when you're Asian I never I never felt like I being I'm, I was being discriminated by people. Yeah. You know, you will never be discriminated exactly. against here. Yeah, that's that's. In here, sure. that's that's the, that's the that's the that's the thing that I remember. And before the Blackberry days, when I was younger, uh, people are. This is the time that I, I think I'm a late bloomer. At that time, and I remember all the Emirates has the first, you know, country in the Middle East to have all the Blackberry set. You know, all the Blackberries are coming here, and the people I said to myself. The Blackberry just came and there's a new one, you know, like it's just not just because of the brand But I think how past face changing here in the UAE, you know, it's it's very um, Friendly country, but at the same time very competitive in, in, in all, by all means, you know If the leader says this they will do that. I remember wh while watching the uh, hope to uh, hope probe to Mars and Sheikh Zayed I remember on December 2 when you guys uh, when the UAE have been established he invited some other foreign people who, you know, uh, planning to go to the moon, and you, you didn't expect that. And when I was watching that, how ambitious that was. And 50 years ago. Exactly. And you're still in the tribes that time? Yes, You know yes, what yes, I have to yes. say? 1970 was like nothing, and then Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Zayed, uh, the father of the UAE, is be upon him. He invited some people from around the world just because he's planning to go, to, he want to go to the moon and to the Mars. And and the dream going to the Mars now being you know a reality. And it's very interesting that you said the dream. Yes. Because Sheikh Zayed is not a person who went to you know Oxford University. Yes. He is not a Harvard graduate. He is not an MIT graduate. He's a person with a dream. All he did was tell the people, I have a dream, and I want to unite this country. Mm -hmm. I want to achieve these goals. In 50 years' time, I want the United Arab Emirates. To be in space. Yes. He, you know, was a very well aware and cultured person with a vision. Yes. And the vision is what founded this country. And us as people and generations to come from, you know, Sheikh Zayed to today, trickling down to the next generations to come, millennials and the younger generation, our kids. The first thing I teach them is to have vision. Look into the future. And where do you want to be? Because if you're looking and focusing on the present alone, I'm not saying that the present is not very important. It is good to have one foot in the present, yes, one foot in the future, but also check always the past. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. And you can do that by documenting your life, reflecting on yourself. And this is what all my writing is about. My writing is not for me, for people. I don't want to publish books. Yes. Maybe one day I get to get to do that. But I primarily right to learn from my own mistakes yes. to learn from my own you know life and how I cannot do it again because history repeats itself <laughs> and I'm a person who 
prides herself on doing the only doing a mistake at least once in life and learning from it. Now, I would say there's one mistake that I've repeated twice, but <laughs> other than that, <laughs> until I read, wrote about it and documented it, it was done. And because I've written about how lonely I was living in Australia. And for a very long time, I wanted to leave the country UAE because I thought that I, I felt like I was so misunderstood and I've written so much about that. But looking back at it today and writing today, I would rather never be anywhere else in the world. Yeah. This is my home. I'm proud to be a UAE national. I'm proud that I've come from this country. And actually, all of these misconceptions of being, you know, uh, Western, too westernized for this country, yes. too, you know, un-Arab for this country, are just all in my head. Yes. Once I started embracing that, I noticed how the world and the UAE, UAE nationals and expats, embraced me yes. because they could see my true self which I was hiding behind my writings yes I was posted online on my website yes I was posted online on my yes. Instagram but I would keep it private it was always about me but now it's more about me living in the city yes. and how I get to experience it as an Imanati national yes. in a city that is welcoming of people from all over the world and I'm actually the minority I, you know the UAE nationals are only 10% of the city so we are the minority of, you know, <laughs> so, but, you know, we don't feel discriminated against. We don't feel like, yeah, you know, this, the city is being taken away from us. Exactly. It's actually, we feel like it's an honor to have these people and to have expats from all over the world live in the city, help us build it and help us, you know, collaborate on the projects and the dreams that some of them even Sheikh Zayed 50 years yes. ago had like the whole world. Yes, it's a beautiful one, you know, I, I, I felt so much ease, you know, more than ever when some Emirati like you acknowledge the existence and the importance of our existence here in the UAE. Because we can all admit, not all the people are very open-minded as you, but you know, I think in differences, when we all have differences, even in our own culture, our own nation, our nationalities, what I've thought to myself is, you, you keep your respect. Of course. You know, I think the respect is the most important tool that you can have. Because even you have a differences, it doesn't mean that you have to be rude with the people. It doesn't mean that you have to be, you know, don't accommodate them like that. So I think wh what values you have as an Emirati really reflects who you are right now. You. you know, you're very bold, you're very, uh, you're very intellect. And at the same time, you're very welcoming with people. Yeah. And, and, this is my first time to, to, to know someone directly who's engaged with Israeli, our brothers in Israel, you know. And I never met any Israeli in my life, by the way. Oh, I've so, met so many yeah. now. <laughs> I've met so many healthy. and we're actually, uh, I was very proud to hear from the Israeli side yes. that they've run a survey on uh, the acceptance of Israelis in the Arab world. Yes. And uh, because of the Abraham Accords and there, because of the treaties with yes. Bahrain and as well in Morocco. And my Israeli counterparts actually told me something very interesting. They told me the highest country to ever score of acceptance of Israelis in the UAE, uh, sorry, in, in their the Gulf, country, yeah. in the Gulf, and in the Arab world yes. was the UAE. Wow. And that tells you a little bit uh, about us and how welcoming we are. Yes, we just signed the peace treaties uh, a few months ago. But we are the most welcoming one out of all of you, all of the yes. Arab countries to, you know, have them and embrace them here. And I know many Israelis that are now moving and settling yes. here. So they love it here. Yes. The weather is nice. The people are welcoming. They are respectful. Yes. You do have and uh, enjoy the same rights as everyone else. We built policies and, uh, you know, laws that do not discriminate against other people, no matter yes. where they come from. And this is the beauty of living in harmony in the city. Exactly. Where I think it's all about peaceful, you know, traditions. It's extremely now. safe. Exactly. And I do not feel as safe walking around in major cities like New York, Paris. Yes. And I've heard the same thing from my Israeli counterparts. Yes, definitely. They said, I, I walk around in Dubai Mall, which is the major, the center of now, as we yes. like to call it, uh, the middle of downtown with, you know, their ha the hats on with their Israeli yes. and they say, no one even looks at me twice. Everyone's so welcoming and so respectful of me and my national dress. 
And I say I cannot wait to meet one of your one of your counterparts. I'm very happy show. to introduce you and maybe it's hopefully beautiful. have you interview one of them oh, some, uh, next. I want to ask you. Let's just chill in the way that have you asked your Israeli friends that uh, what 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 is their impression about UAE it, about Dubai? They are in love. Oh, wow. Honestly, all of them had nothing but positive feedback for us. All of them cannot work, I cannot wait but to work with us and collaborate on different various projects. And, uh, you know, being part of UAE is and Israel is, and what I like to call it now, the globe is, yeah. because the globe is peaceful and the world is peaceful and we're trying to pave the way for a generation where peace and collaboration is the major values that they share no matter where they come from around the world we all regardless where we come from in the Israeli uh, Israelis group and UAE's group share one common value we want to learn from each other we want to collaborate with each other and the first hackathon that we are actually uh, uh, schedule uh, is um, having is in 16 days now this is a hackathon between UAE and Israel where we're going to have Her Excellency Sheikh uh, sorry, Her Excellency Minister Shamma Al Mazrui, the Minister of Youth and the youngest female minister around the world at the time of her appointment, uh, uh, going to be part as a speaker of this hackathon that that Israel is and UAE is uh, is you know managing. It's going to be in 15 days. You know registration is open. It's free. It's going to be online over Zoom and. Um, uh, if you go to israel-is.com, uh, you can access it and register for this hackathon. I can share the link with yes, you as well. Yes, where we're going to discuss how we can improve education, fintech, uh, infer, uh, youth uh, uh, future and youth you know, uh, uh, empowerment in the region between Israel and UAE. And this is the first, you know, we just signed the peace accords and the brand accords months ago, but we're already in a place where organizing you know conferences for people from all over the world to come and learn from us and we us as in Israel and UAE to learn from each other on how we can advance our nations further how we can empower our youth how we can help them you know establish you know businesses or you know come up with you know new startups or uh, improve the education process and improve curriculums not just in the UAE but also in Israel and how we can learn from each other that's about beautiful. how we did for like how we grow that's a beautiful I just like to comment as well the work of the UAE government uh, after welcoming the Israeli they never forgot their their brotherhood their, the other neighboring countries as well they helped many refugees uh, through uh, Red Crescent the UAE donated so much and the only Arab country who donates a lot of tons of help you know to, to other region in Yemen in, in Syria uh, not all the people don't discuss this but in my research as you know because I love searching about what you thank you for takes. mentioning yeah. that so Actually, I, I like to I like to I like to let them know that the UAE never abandons other neighboring countries in, in you know in fact they're the way now to meditate uh, I mean to, to meditate the, the peaceful way uh, you know that it should be worked in this way the process so I'm, I'm so glad that you know you open about you know welcoming our Israeli battery in the UAE because I think if we uh, as a national you know came from other country we have the rights here right now I think everybody has the right to be here yes and and if you're we are given a privilege to be here then why not you know uh, we, UAE um, we get a question them uh, in, the, in the governments because they, they only like a peaceful way you know as what she mentioned earlier, we travel around, but there's no place like you in when it comes to safety first and foremost. You cannot even walk, you know in Dubai, walk like 3 a.m. having my gadgets, nothing. We'll be safe. You could walk around wearing gold and exactly. no one can say anything. And actually, uh, <laughs> a very funny conversation I had before yesterday with one of my Israeli counterparts mm -hmm. as well. He was uh, looking at a video of Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, mm -hmm. the ruler of Dubai, walking around the city and congratulating people on the whole probe yes. and you know, shaking hands with all the engineers that worked on it. And uh, my Israeli friend said to me, it's amazing, he's walking around with no security. Yes. And I said, if our ruler is walking around with security because he feels unsafe mm -hmm. in his own country, how will the people feel safe? Yes, that's a good one. I, he said, what? He said, do you really believe that? I said yes, because the minute I see my ruler walking around feeling unsafe in his own country, how will I feel safe? Yes. Oh, that's really wonderful. I like to you know to give this a, a good gesture of conversation because 
I remember when a few years back, I I, I, I watched all the old videos of um, the Lich Zayed, and and now uh, the, the the interview with Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum with 60 Minutes. Uh, it's wow. a British uh, show, right? He went to Dubai just nothing, and I remember when I was young. There there's some incident that um, all the people like standing up, and I have, I'm, I'm with my, I was with my friend. I'm like, what's going on? All the Emirates is standing, and then the Sheikh just passed by. And that time, I, you know, because his picture is in the road like that, I didn't, I didn't know what exactly the shake is when I was younger. I'm like, who's that? Why, why the people are like? And then he said, hi, how? Then he just passed by in front of us. I was like, I think it's a shake. And because there's so many, no, it's not a burger, but the people who like, you know, to be in the meeting like that, I think they're rounding just like that in Dubai Mall. So the time, it was 2009. You know, after because there is an incident in in Dubai Mall that the aquarium had, had failed something like that, and then he checked it himself, and that's the time I said, oh my God, like who who, who will come in the city as a leader, you know, a big man just like that, and I think I, there's a story in the Bujal Arab, I don't know if this is story or or a myth, but uh, Sheikh Mohammed tried to enter the Bujal Arab, and um, because uh, one of my friend, one of our family friend works there. Mm-hmm. In Jumeirah Group, and Sheikh Mohammed was trying to enter with just head cap and normal, and the security doesn't allow him because the the dress code was not, and then it's coming from the parking side, and then you know what he did? Uh, the the security was so embarrassed, but you know that the security was promoted that time. In because he did his job right. Because he did his job right so much. How can you you know what I mean? In in my in my other, unfortunately in other countries, I'm not gonna mention anything, but they will use their powers. They will take advantage of it, but Sheikh Mohammed was so much humble, and, and he said he will come back. And then I think he came back with Kandura, and and he was able to eat. And that's the time that the the the, the security realized that it, it was the highness, and that's it. In the morning, in the couple of weeks, get promoted. You know that was the story in 2009, and I cannot uh, forget from my friend who personally Actually, works there in Bujala. And I'll tell you my funny story. The last time I saw Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid as well, I was in Dubai Mall. I was wearing shorts and I, you know, <laughs> had a tank top, and uh, you know, uh, um, I was going down the escalator, and he would just go. He's going up. So I saw him, and he was just going up, and I was going down, and I said, "Hi," <laughs> in <laughs> English, <laughs> and he said, "Hello, salam alaikum, salam alaikum salam." And this was the last time I saw him, but I met Sheikh oh, Mohammed wow. so many times, you know, officially. <laughs> yeah, my of course. Friends. But um, that time it was just because I was so shocked to see him, you know, come up, yes. and, and you know, he is a very welcoming person, and yes. you see these values trickling down to the people because. It comes from the leader and then from the leader to you know the people yes. under him and the people under him to the next generation and then my kids and then their kids because if the leader is not welcoming if the leader is not embracing the values of the city of being you know tolerant of loving each other of loving all the expats who live here how will it trickle down to the people it, I like I said at our very core we are all human we are all the same yes. Sheikh Mohammed is a firm believer of that Sheikh Mohammed does not consider himself as a person who's above the people. He's yes. one of the people. He just has the, you know, the the benefit. He has. He's just been born lucky to be able to lead this country, and yes. he sees it as, and he sees it as an advantage that he can, you know, uh, promote the values of being Arab, promote the values of being Muslim, promote the values of being, you know, uh, you know, Islam comes from the word yes. peace. And sure. if you don't have, if you don't have that within yourself, and within others. You cannot really establish anything. It's a beautiful one, Said. You know, you amaze me. I know you've been hitting by the sun. I hope you're okay there. No, yeah. I'd like to, uh, you know, the last few message is, you know, for you to give to the youth and to the young generation. Like you, you know, uh, some people thought that being privileged and non privileged are, you know, are limited. But, you know, I'd like you to, you know, I like this message to come from you. What is your message to the generation who would like to pursue their dreams that? Maybe you know they felt some something that limited them to to do so. And wh- can you share some of your um, experience that you you can say that you know? But at this point, I did this because of that. My first advice is: do not let your failures put you down. I know it is very easily said than done. I've had some of my darkest times where I felt so unmotivated and down and I felt what is the point of my writing no one's reading it and no one's even going to uh, you know uh, acknowledge it 
And uh, I'll go back to the first time I was published because in university we had this uh, booklet that was part of the Japanese Himalati government. Oh. Wow. And they chose a poem of mine, a very short <laughs> limerick, Mashallah. to publish can it in Arabic, English, and Japanese. Can you, can you still you remember that line? or? Uh, I. It is definitely on my website, okay. the poem. Yes. So uh, I can share that with you. Uh, but it was very interesting to me because it was my first piece of acknowledgement at the age of, I don't think, 20, 21. Nice. And uh, it was important and it also stands for who I am, right? Yes. A person who communicates within cultures. And this was a, you know, like a very small project uh, from the embassy of the UAE and the embassy of uh, Japan where they would like to you know have some cult some cultural conversation and have some uh, conversations around you know cultural uh, exchange so it was a group of Japanese students and a group of Emirati students that would write small short poems and it was a four line poem oh, <laughs> it, was very, it was a limerick it was very very short we have to find it out on your website at Said Al-Mahiri.com Said al so uh, you could share the link as well yes. with your um, uh, because I know it's hard to spell my name <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I some. actually <laughs> yes. but, it, but you know I, I like to give you uh, as well the credits you know because you you're, you're in a just you're doing this. I just like to let the people know that Said Al-Mahiri, what you can see in, in the social media, that is him. He never fakes anything. He's so genuine. He's so welcoming. And you know, when you came earlier, though, I cannot disclose a lot of stuff, but we, we spoke a lot of many things now. And I can say that, you know, you're, you're an epitome of a person as an Arab, inequality of work hard, uh, work hard more, then you will get all the results. You know, you you are such a great uh, role model for that. Thank as, you so much. You know, as an, Thank as you so a, much. You really humbled me. Yeah, really. As, as, as a believer that you know you cannot even expect an Emirati uh, because you know many people are doing you know a lot of wrong thoughts towards Emirati. Um, you know, they said that if you're Emirati, you don't need to work. You know, you have these ideas before. I, I work day and night. Exactly. <laughs> I work day and night. Trust me, I, I hardly sleep. <laughs> yeah, but you know, he's very genuine and welcoming. And for those people who would like to invite him in the, in the future show, there in the Philippines, we have a lot of viewers as well. They like to know more about the cultures. And this is this conversation that all out and about empowers so much, not just about Arabs, and not just about Emirati, but the unity. You know the peace, the peace process that we have here, and the culture we have here. So I want to thank all the viewers as well, and of course I like to give a shout out to our partners, College Dubai, Double Click Solutions, Boss Lady Productions, and as well I like to greet my family and my sister in the UK is having birthday today. Happy birthday! Yes. Happy birthday! <laughs> and uh, I like to emphasize this that this conversation that I, I've learned so much, many things about about Said about his writing, about it, you know, because earlier, before asking, you know, he's so smart, because before I asked the question, he already had the answer. So I was like amazed here in this conversation. <laughs> Do you have any uh, invites with, with our viewers as well, or any events that would you like to mention? Uh, I would like you all to sign up to our hackathon between Israel and UAE. I would like you all to check out and maybe hopefully donate to Mangroves for Mankind. Uh, and please, please, do reach out to me if you have any questions. I am very approachable uh, and I love learning more about you as much as you would love to learn about me. So please do not ever let anything hold you back. Just start the conversation with a hi and I'll take it from there. Uh, thank you all and thank you so much for having me Shaili today. And it is really an honor to be on your show. And uh, thank you all for watching this and thank you so much for having me and embracing me as an Emirati yeah. that is trying to make a very small difference in yes. the society and you know, showing you know what being Emirati yeah, is all exactly. about that's that's the thing you know i i think you must also have a show in the future because you you are very welcoming you're very diverse you have this diverse personality are you planning to have a virtual show or maybe actual show in the you, future you know in my high school yearbook my uh Close friends uh, wrote in my husband, most likely to become Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I will never forget that. Yes. But you never know. I never. I will never say no. Oh, exactly. And uh, having and hosting a talk show would be an honor for me. And of course, maybe it is something that I should consider in the future. Being so busy right now with all the projects yes. that I'm running, it is uh, um, a bit difficult, and I will need support from other people to yes. help me with that. 
So I hope, I hope, I hope if anyone's watching this and willing to support me and provide me with a show, please come and talk to me. Yes. I would love, love, love to do that. Thank you very much, Saeed. You know, a lot and about would like to actually thank uh, all the people who's watching right now and, you know, Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever you are. I want to I wanna thank as well, um, you know, from the bottom of my heart, Said for accepting this invitation because this is one of a kind interview and this is our first outdoor interview. And, and we celebrate life and this is how the conversation was. And thank you very much for the opportunities. But we're not done. We have two minutes to do fast talk because I'm going to ask him some of this stuff. Just very quick and you will choose one of them. Okay. Okay. So let's just, let's just get my other phone. All right. Yeah. Hi, we're back here. I'm gonna ask him some of the fast stuff that we have. Are you still okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay, so maybe this is more than 10 questions like that, but yeah. So I need to choose one out of the 10 questions? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Said, um, do you like morning or afternoon? Afternoon. Sunset or sunrise? Sunset. Kandura or pants? Pants. Um, adventure or writing? Writing while adventuring. Oh, okay, that's a good one. Um, okay, th I think I know this. The first time you traveled. <laughs> uh, Which age? 14 years old. 14 years old. Okay. By um, myself, you mean? Yes, by yes, yourself. Yes, 14 years yes, old. Exactly. And what is your favorite um, food? Uh, sushi. Oh, really? Um, what is your favorite perfume? Uh, oh, cool. Dior Homme. Oh, Reminds good. me of my father. Oh, wow. And what... Okay, so as a Saeed, can you please describe yourself in one word? Loving. Okay. Saeed, do you like pancake or waffle? Pancake. Ice cream or french fries? Ice cream. Cookies or blueberry muffin? <laughs> Both. Blueberry muffin. Okay. And um, unforgettable, um, recent unforgettable experience? Meeting you. Oh, thank you very much. And what is your message to the people? In, in, in what is the main word that you can use as a message? Only one word to the people who's watching in general concept. It's a phrase. Okay. Be who you are. That's a good one. Thank you very much, Saeed, for your time. It's my pleasure to have you in all out and about. I'm so glad everyone is watching. This is an amazing experience for me. You cannot imagine that you know we just. Um, Build this all up and about last year, like in June in pandemic, and now we're outside having an interview with one of one of the best Emirati you could ever ever met in your life. So thank, thank you. you very much again, Said, for your time. You have um, your Instagram, your social media as well to invite our audience. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for watching me. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this talk and le le learning a little bit about me. And I please reach out to me. I would like to learn a little bit about you. Thank you very much. We're now ending here in All Out and About. We're going to have fun. And thank you for tuning in and have a great day. Thank you.